Hey everybody, welcome back to Heavy Metal Horizons. And recently I did a video on this radio right here. This is the Radtel RT470, not the 470X, not the 470L, just the plain old 470. And I was recommending it as a great entry-level ham radio, and I still recommend it. It only costs about $50, but it runs up to 10 watts, and actually in some cases a little bit more than 10 watts. It has USB charging, great airband reception that a lot of the modern uh, handheld radios don't have. And that's actually one of my favorite features uh, on this radio is that really good quality airband reception. I like to have this in my car when I'm driving to the airport or if I'm at the hangar, you know, cleaning the airplane or something like that. I'll just have this radio on so I can monitor the tower frequency and all that stuff. It's got four transmitting bands, you know, VHF and UHF. Uh, it's got frequency copying, great battery life, all kinds of cool features at a really great price. You get this radio and maybe a hand mic and a big antenna and you're set. So this was already a great radio, but now what has happened is that the company itself, not some random guy on the internet, but the company itself has released some upgraded firmware for this radio which totally opens up what you can do with it. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the programming software and also how to upgrade the firmware on this radio. And then I'll, I'll show you a little bit of, you know, the new capabilities it has. But of course, guys, real quick, if you like videos like this, here at Heavy Metal Horizons, we do cars, aviation, and radio. If you like that stuff and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, now I wanna say uh, at the beginning here, that this new firmware allows you to do some things that you're really not supposed to do with the radio. So just be aware of that. If you're new to this stuff and you don't know what you're doing, make sure you thoroughly research your FCC regulations and all that stuff so uh, you're not gonna be accidentally violating anything with the new capabilities of this radio. Okay, so the big thing here is what does the new firmware do? Uh, it basically really, really massively widens both the reception and the transmitting capability of the radio. So for receiving, you can now receive from all the way down to 16 megahertz all the way up to 999.995 megahertz, just shy of one gigahertz. And that's for receiving. The real kicker is that you can now transmit from 136 megahertz all the way up to that same high number, 999 megahertz. And there's no gaps in there. There's no part of that frequency range which is blocked out where you can't transmit in there. So like I mentioned before, be careful with this because you can now transmit on all kinds of frequencies and different bands that are not meant for amateur radio, you know, ham radio use. And in particular, you might notice that the lowest end of transmitting, that 136 megahertz, that actually overlaps with the air band. But fortunately, as far as transmitting goes, this is an FM only radio. So, uh, and the air band is AM. So there's not much chance of interference, although it is still possible. But just in general, just don't transmit on 136 megahertz. Okay, so now let's really get into the meat of this video. I've got my computer set up over here with the screen capture going. And I'm going to show you first how to use the programming software for this radio, and then second, how to do the firmware upgrade, which uses a different software. So I've got the radio here, and then I also have my USB programming cable. And this obviously just plugs into the side ports here, and then the other end goes into the computer. But let's go ahead and plug this in and take a look. Okay, guys, so the first thing I want to point out here is where you get this software. You go to the website, it's just radtels.com, and then you go to uh, support and software download. And then you've got all of the model numbers for the radio. So you gotta scroll down here and you gotta find the uh, RT470. And if you look on here, there's two different versions of this radio. There's like an older version and a newer version, but the one you're looking for uh, is the RT470 10 watt either the old PCB or the new PCB. And so depending on which one you have, you download a different firmware. And the way you tell which one you have is you turn on the radio 
and you go to the menu here. I'll see if I can show you this. And then you actually just go to the very last uh, menu option, which is going to be like, I think it's number 51 or 52, right around there. And it'll just say version. And then it says which firmware you currently have. And if the firmware you currently have is starts with a one, then that's the old version. If it starts with a two, that's the new version. So just depending on which radio you have, make sure you download the right software. I've got the old version, so I download the software for the firmware that starts with a one and then goes to something else. It was like 1.2 in the case of the radio that I had. Okay, so once you've got the software, now we just want to plug in the radio and all you do is you plug the USB uh, end into the computer, plug in the, uh, the radio over here, goes right into the side, and then turn on the radio. That's all you got to do with the radio, at least for now. Now I'm going to go ahead and load up the software here. It's called All Band Walkie. This is the software right here. I'm going to make this a little easier to see. But the trick is, in order for the software to communicate to the radio, you got to know which port it's using. So what we do here is you go, and this is Windows 10, by the way, but you go into Settings, and you want to go to Devices, and then it's going to load up all this stuff, you know, all your hard drives and that kind of stuff. Look down at the bottom here. It says USB Serial CH340 COM10. COM10 is what is important. So just remember that, COM10, or write it down. Then back in the software here, we go to Settings, Port, and now you choose... It's given me three options, COM3, COM1, COM10. I select COM10, press OK. Now I can go up here and click the Read button, and I hit OK. It's still in Chinese. I'm going to hit that. And now it's going to read, it's going to communicate with and read what's on the radio. And now we've got all of our channels, the channel information. You've got your split for repeaters, PL tones. All this information is on here. And if you want to change this stuff, just go into one of these fields, type something, and then when you're done with everything, you hit write, and it'll save it to the radio. And that's really all there is to it. Now, there's one more really important thing here. If you go to Edit, Optional Features, it'll pop up another window here. This is going to be all of the other stuff that you can control in the radio. So wideband or narrowband, the frequency step, uh, transmitter power, do you want the voice in English, do you want the voice in Chinese, all those other options are done through this menu here. So again, once you've made all the changes you want, close that and hit write and then it'll save it to the radio. And that's really all there is to using the programming software. Pretty easy to use, but now now let's go to the firmware upgrade, which actually uses a different piece of software. And back here on the website, you can see it'll say firmware to expand frequency. It's got three different versions. I'm using the latest version. You download this, and when you load it up, it's going to come with the separate piece of software, which is, you know, loads the, the bootloader, which loads the firmware. So open that up. <clears throat> now what you do with this, is you load the firmware file in here, and we've just got this one, load that, open, COM10 again, and now it's, it's ready to, to do it. But there's one more thing you gotta do in order to load the firmware, you have to get the radio uh, prepared to accept it. The way you do it, it's a little tricky, you gotta press down the two side buttons, not the push to talk, but the two buttons below it, hold them both down and then turn on the radio and you see that light that light will come on okay it stays on let go of the buttons now it's ready to receive the firmware so now we're going to go back and our our firmware is all ready to go now we just hit load it's again it's in chinese but let's hit that button right there and look this thing's flashing now Boom, 100%, the radio resets, and you now have the new firmware installed. Now you can close this, close this, turn the radio off, unplug it, and turn it back on. Welcome. Frequency mode. And that is it.
the, the firmware is installed and now you're going to have access to this way, way bigger range, both in terms of reception and transmitting. Okay guys, so that is it. Um, that's how you do it. It's really pretty easy to do. And all of that software and the firmware file, all of that stuff is available from the Radtel website. And I think that's one of the coolest things about this is that, you know, the, the um, what is it, like the UV K5 radios, there are a lot of uh, firmware upgrades for those radios, but those are kind of like open source firmware. In a lot of the cases, you don't really know who's making that stuff. This stuff at least is coming directly from the company that sells the radio. Also guys, one more thing to consider, this programming cable. In a lot of cases, this will come with the radio when you buy it. Uh, that was the case for me, but not always. You know, there's these different packages and everything, and some of them you order it and it'll come with a different antenna or with or without the programming cable or a hand mic. So just be, you know, be careful when you're ordering this stuff about which sort of package you're getting. And if you want to do the, uh, the programming software or the firmware upgrades, you're definitely going to need this. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. I hope that was helpful for anybody out there. And again, uh, I really, you know, I continue to be a big fan of this radio. If you're getting into ham radio, amateur radio stuff, uh, I think this is a great one to start with just because of all of the features, the uh, reception, sound quality, and obviously the price. So guys, I'm going to have links for everything I was talking about in the video, all the software and everything, links down in the video description below. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you soon.